Well, me and my brother graduated from eighth grade, and my sisters graduated from high school through a big party. It was like 100 people. I made pretty much all the food. But I just woke up and was like, I want to cook. So I just found myself, you know, cooking to blow off steam. And I didn't even take it serious at first. I'm like, oh, cooking class, all I can eat. Uh, and then as it progressed on, I just started loving it. You know what? I'm going to do culinary because I love food. It's what I want to do. And I really can't imagine myself doing anything else. So we're here to talk about the Master Chef class, and obviously the idea is based around generating uh, opportunities for the students to work with top name chefs in the industry uh, to figure out, you know, how their uh, skill sets have made them successful today. So we brought in four top chefs: Paul Varant, who is with V and with Perennial Varant, John Hogan with Kiefer's, uh, Ryan Wombacher, who used to be with Topaz and who is now opening up a restaurant with the concept of the Central Standard Time uh, as, a, as a concept, and then Beverly Kim, who was a contestant on Top Chef, who used to be with the Fairmont Hotel, uh, all very great chefs in their own right, and very different in their techniques. Uh, Paul is a very uh, farm-to-table driven chef, he uses local, uh, locally sourced items, and likes to preserve the seasonality of those items. Uh, John is very old school French style, uh, French trained, and we could tell that in the charcuterie that we did in his class. Uh, Chef Beverly obviously is uh, Korean, and so she brought that great Asian flair uh, and a concept of stocks and sauces that the kids managed to learn some new techniques with. And then Chef Ryan, a very Mediterranean based chef who brought in some unique techniques for starches. So each of their concepts and each of their uh, techniques that the, they showed the students managed to lend itself to a three course menu. It is the first time we've done a class with, uh, with the concept of using master chefs. I mean, we have some fantastic chefs working for us here at Robert Morris University uh, as far as instructors go. You know, but to get an industry, um, somebody who's in the industry that's at the top of their craft at that moment in time uh, is a very unique concept and it's not something that's easily done. It's different learning like the classic way how to do it from the textbook and pretty much just reading about it and doing it but having someone that works in with the stuff and show you how to do it and then say okay now you do it. Working with people who really really know their stuff and you can see that coming out of them makes it just that much easier to pick up you know little bits of information they they really want us to, to be successful so they're they're going to be the one they help you find you know jobs they talk to you about chefs and like even this class they're bringing in a master chefs from all over that's just going that just markets you out there in general come in with no expectations come in with an open mind and an open pad and take copious notes like you've never taken notes before because these guys are giving you the inside look at what it's like as a master chef in this industry to be successful. It's not something you will ever find in a textbook. You know, these are the, the tips and the techniques and the trade, the trade secrets that, you know, make a great chef uh, successful. My specialty, I mean, I, I cook American modern. I mean, that's how I define myself, but my inspiration comes from a lot of ancient a Asian techniques and preservation and fermentation. I really think that brings uh, interesting flavors to my food. That's my style. And that's why you have these taste buds, because you crave sweet. You need the carbohydrates for energy. You crave salt, because you need that water and salt balance. So you crave this umami because you need this protein and amino acids and enzymes in your body. And um, Asian cuisine, I really feel, um, is that umami sensory is one of the most important senses and that what makes a different tasting um, from uh, Western cuisine. I started off talking about basic stocks, Asian stocks, um, how the techniques are much different than the Western stocks and why they're so important. 
and we talked about fermentation and pickling and fermented Asian flavors and I really could see that they've never seen anything like this before and like or these techniques and the light bulb kind of going out like oh so that's why when I eat this dish or go to a Chinese restaurant this is tender or this is and it helps them connect some of their, their own food memories with Asian food and help them appreciate what Asian food is all about. Your chi, your chi right? Kimchi, chi. I forgot what it was called, but it was something with chicken in it. And it was good, because it had so many different flavors and I'm just used to the takeout, the orange chicken, beef and broccoli, so it was something different. I really wanted them to get a grasp of basic uh, Asian techniques. Um, like I said, um, it's so vast, but if they can grasp what is Chinese cooking, what is the flavors of Japanese cooking, and what's, how does wok, what does wok cooking entail? Well, I never knew how to wok cook. I didn't understand that whole process. I didn't know everything had to be already in place. We didn't. We had a demonstration a while back when I first started, but we never got a chance to actually do it ourselves. And this time, we were able to do it ourselves. So I think that that was my favorite lesson. It, it was really a delight to see them cooking in the wok, and it looked like they had a satisfaction that they did something. They they made something taste great, um, and that they can take that home with them. If they could walk away from that having those basics, and then they can incorporate their modern twist on it. I think um, having that basic is very important, that, that traditional foundation, and that from there, you can be more creative. Okay, Brussels sprouts and the eggs and the bacon, that, I, think that, I think that was the first one she demoed for us. That was really good, so that was, that was interesting. We really enjoyed the flavor with that. It's kind of reminded me like, like breakfast, but it wasn't really breakfast. But then the sunny side egg on top is the garnish. Like That made me want to start putting sunny side eggs on top of everything for like the next week. I'm originally from central Illinois. I came up here in 2000 to uh, go to culinary school out of high school. The last four years I've been uh, working at Topaz Cafe and the Gemstone Restaurant Group, running Dolce's Pizzeria, Amber Cafe, and Topaz at all different times, but mostly Topaz Cafe. Uh, the kids today, I came in and tried to like almost, how do you say, do almost like a regular day if they were gonna work in a restaurant. That's, what, that's how I kind of do everything in my life. So I came in, we did our demonstration, kind of got them before the demonstration to set up and get things ready so that way we could go right into making things and understanding. We're gonna start our sauces first. The next thing that needs to go in is the potatoes for the gnocchi. While the potatoes for the gnocchi are going, then we start our pasta dough recipes because you still gotta let those rest. So we would sat there, we made pasta dough, we roasted the potatoes from the gnocchi before, then we prepped the stuff to infuse the pastas and basically try and push them through a regular day. It's almost like prepping for a restaurant. I learned how to make pastas really quick. Because um, you, you don't have a lot of time when you're in the kitchen to take your time making it. So we learned how to do stuff quickly, but right. I've never really gone in depth into making gnocchi before and um, making the other pasta doughs and rolling it by hand. Like, I've only done it once before and that was probably my favorite part because like it just it's something that clicks with me and I enjoyed getting to learn how someone that's been doing it for 30 years like how they do it and tell me that I was doing a good job. Usually risotto when we when we first learned it took like 45 minutes and with the technique we learned it was about 30 20 minutes so about like half the time. I only made it a couple times, so it was nice for him to show me how, personally how to make it. That was really cool because it's, an, it's a really important dish to know how to make because a lot of restaurants are going to see that on the menu. So then by the end of it, you know, it's nice when you can take all of your final products and make different dishes and try and everyone can compare. Even though they all made the same base recipes, they all compare and everything turns out different. Italian sausage veal. I hate sausage and I like that. Because you know why? You have three other things that balance out the sausage flavor. Yeah. Everyone for the most part, every one of them surprised me. Like, one person did something really well, but everyone had a good effort at, at the end of the day. Some of them excelled at certain things, and some of them weren't as good, but 
It seemed like everyone was on the same page, which is really hard with students. It has to be Chef Ryan's gnocchi. Uh, I, uh, when we learned it uh, a few uh, months back uh, before this class even started, I tried it at home, and the one difference between his and mine was that he used Yukon Gold and I used Rusted, so it's pretty psyched to see that, you know, nice Iron Chef, it was only a little marginal difference between our two recipes. I've been in the business since 1979, quite a tour. Mostly in French restaurants, including a stint in France and uh, several great French restaurants here in Chicago back in the 80s and 90s. And we've been open at Keepers 11 years, serving uh, contemporary American steak and seafood. Uh, my passion comes, I believe, I was born to do it. I mean, there's a lot of things that happened in the younger in my life that pushed me towards food. Uh, my passion or my style comes from my training as a young chef, a young cook, which was French. And I think once you learn French technique, you can cook any food. It's just a matter of different ingredients. Uh, from my standpoint, try and bring back some of the old things that were great for many years that have kind of been a little bit put to the side in the last couple decades, although in the late 90s there's been a good push by young chefs to start making charcuterie, which is what we focused on today. So that's something that I've been making for 30 years. And for 15 of those years, I couldn't give the stuff away. Now everybody's craving it, so it's great. I've only done charcuterie, you know, a couple of times. So like, you know, making the liver pâtés and things like that. It just the delicateness of it is really something I got out of it. Today we came in, we uh, did a little uh, introduction, and then we um, went over some of the mise en place, the preparations for today, and then we demonstrated a few of the dishes, and we completed a couple of them. Uh, I love rabbit, so. Uh, when we made the terrine from the little, um, the, the back of the rabbit, the uh, little tenderloin, and pounded that out and made a terrine out of it, that was awesome. I learned that flavor, you can never have too much salt. I basically learned that you could use products that don't cost as much, like kidneys and livers and all that, and make something out of it, because those are usually products that are thrown away, but you had to be creative and use every penny worth of what you buy. They were very enthusiastic. They asked a lot of very intelligent questions. Um, the majority of them could kind of sense maybe something wasn't quite right the way it was supposed to be going, and they asked me how they could repair it. And it's something I taught them is, or, or told them, whether they learn it or not is on, on them, is to not quit on your dishes. You can always, 99% of the time, you can fix something if it's not right. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's good. And whether this is going to work or not, I'm not sure, but we're going to give it our best shot. I always say, never quit in the kitchen. You can always, you can always make it right somehow. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Been in Chicago since '95. Um, I have two restaurants: one V in Western Springs, which opened in 2004, and then then I did a partnership with the Boca Group in May of 2011 and opened Perennial Verant. A huge part of what we do at the, at the restaurants is you know, buying from a lot of farms from around the Midwest and cooking very seasonally and preserving um, a ton along the way to, to use in the, in the off season. In the spring of, of 2012, I came out with The Preservation Kitchen, which, which, is, which is a book, which is a glorified canning book um, that, that half of the book is all the different canned items and then the other latter half of the book is how to incorporate that stuff in the food. Um, so today's focus with the class was the first half of the book. I did not really demonstrate the dishes or the, or the canned items ahead of time. My, my feeling was it's going to make more sense just for every group to kind of do everything and I'll be there as support and offer guidance. And each of the groups were able to do all six of the recipes. There was one recipe, the seventh item, which is the one I did, which was a milk jam. So, and then, uh, and then I'm coming back in a few weeks. And, uh, and this is when, you know, the, the, the class, from what they've learned from myself and all the other chefs, are gonna put together a, uh, a feast inspired by what they've learned.
I haven't done a lot of just what we call mystery boxes where they give you a couple different foods and you have to put it together and make it taste good. Um, I do that a lot at home, but I'm not used to doing it under pressure with a time limit, so that would definitely be my greatest challenge. One constant worry is like just you want to you want to perform to the best of your ability just because like this is an important person and Chef Flower, you know, he's a good person to be liked by. Um, and just always that constant like worry of doing your best and getting kind of almost like because you want that recognition from these, you know, important people. Give a nice round of applause for the master chefs that have taught you throughout the uh, entire quarter. Y'all remember Chef John, Chef Paul, Chef Beverly, and Chef Ryan, okay? Now, for the next 15 minutes, they're gonna come from station to station, they'll mingle around, and they'll take a look at what your plan is, and let you know if the world is going to end or not in the next three hours, okay? Please, they're not here to plan your menu or execute your menu for you. They're here to advise you to give you guidance. Remember the techniques that you learned from each of the chefs, because that's what we're gonna really be looking at, is your ability to execute what you have learned. Any questions? No. Go ahead, chefs, have a mingle around. Let's get Beverly and Ryan this side, Paul and John start that side, and then each group is a two tables pushed together. Taking what we get for the basket for the final and translating what they taught us. That's, because it's one thing just to replicate what they gave us, but you know, to put our own spin on it. As far as today goes, when the kids arrived, you know, the first thing that we did was we, we had them set up their mystery ingredients. Uh, and, you know, they got to peruse those mystery ingredients and figure out what it was that they were gonna be utilizing today. Then they got time to develop a menu, uh, creating a soup, an appetizer, and a main course. What I really found interesting was that each week that the master chefs were here, they nailed everything that they were expected to do. You know, but then bring it into the final, and that's once again, you've got the pressure of knowing that these master chefs are gonna be judging your food. You've got to try and remember all of the techniques that they have learned. You know, all this stuff that we learned, it's actually hard to remember just so much, and you just don't wanna mess up. So I, I feel like the hardest is to Please yourself, please others, and uh, hopefully you're as good as you think you are. Because you know there is a lot of stuff to know, and you don't you want to feel like you know it all, but it's just impossible. Three, three, three. three. Got it. All right. Number one, right? So put it in front of the tape. One. Number two. There I go. And just one. Some are consommés, some are broths, so... Uh, just now we presented the potato and leek soup. Basically what we did is we sautéed some pan... So we had bacon, we used pancetta as a substitute. And then with the pancetta, we kind of rendered it off, took it out. And then we added the leeks, onion, kind of cooked that out. And then what I did, since so we didn't have wine, I used the Meyer lemon, like the pickling liquid. And some of the Meyer lemon, put that in there because it's got some acidity. I just wanted to go through and just kind of taste them all because I have a big pet peeve of mine is when a soup isn't very hot yeah. and there's there's only group four is the only one that's close to being as hot as it should be yeah. and from, from what I'm tasting. In group two? Well uh, I kind of wanted to impress a little bit so I did a little infusion learned by Chef Ryan. So I infused a little uh, spicy uh, jalapeno into uh, some gnocchi. I noticed everyone was doing gnocchi, but no one didn't infuse gnocchi, so I was hoping to do that. What do you think of the gnocchi cook? Like, I mean, it's kind of light. I like it. I like it. I think it's pretty well done. Yeah, it's not doughy. It's not doughy? It's, it's, it's delicate, which is good. Considering that it's turnip, turnip. I, mean, I get, I get yeah, the yeah, turnip, turnip flavor. Potato, yeah, turnip potato, yeah. Do you taste any turnip? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's there. Okay. I like the flavor of this. Yeah, I like the flavor profile, it's almost it's like an Asian jambalaya. It's got kimchi jjigae. Kimchi jjigae. Mm -hmm. It's like a kimchi jjigae. Yeah. Um, our first course was a soup. We did um, a kimchi soup with uh, coconut rice. So it was kind of like stewed down kimchi, caramelized. And we cooked off some rice and stirred in some coconut milk to it. It was really good. 
Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like a. I think it has the most gumbo. like yeah. gung ho like flavor. <laughs> they yeah. went for it. Like a Korean like gumbo. Like a built Kim went down to New Orleans. Korean gumbo. Out of everything we taste, I'm up by this one. Oh, this is us. I think it was the last one. Yeah. Nope, no, we won't. Group, group two did a nice job on the scotch egg. I'm actually glad they didn't cut it over. Yeah, right. pretty much. Oh, they yeah. used the short rib, I think, the, the marinated. Wow. Walking it over, I was a little nervous because, I, I mean, it looked nice on the table, but when you walk it, you know, it kind of goes this way and that way. So it's, I mean, that was, I was a little nervous about that. I think it's great because it's like it's not only they're criticizing you, but they're also here to help you. So it's not like they're just telling you what's bad, but they're also telling you what's good and what you can do to make it better. We did uh, gnocchi with uh, roasted chicken and like a mixed grains with a. Uh, we did jams a couple weeks ago with Chef Paul, so we just incorporated the jam like a jam sauce for the vinaigrette for it. And uh, yeah, that was our last course. You know, in our industry, in the culinary industry, we don't put our skills on a piece of paper and hand it in as a resume. Um, our skills are tested when we go for an interview by cooking. For me, I think I knew that there were going to be pitfalls and I knew that there were going to be some highlights and each group had both. But but the effort was there for sure effort was there. across the board. You know, once again, I, I still think that these guys, as hyped as they are, as nervous as they are, you guys are doing the judging. You know, I mean, the concepts of that. I think all of us, though, you know, for, through our class experience, they seem to almost nail everything. So we did have high expectations coming back to right. this, thinking like, well, well, they nailed what we taught them well. Like from what you said, John, and you, yeah. and with, with Beverly, with. Her dishes and everything, I came in with high expectations, like, we're going to get blown away today. These kids are going to really show. Yeah. And as you say, there are, there are some high spots in each dish, uh, but other things that every student needs to work through. That's right. I think it's a good learning experience for them. Thanks to me coming here, like, I actually know so much more from, like, cooks, like, where I work at the restaurant right now, like, they, they know what they're doing, but, I, like, as far as knowledge-wise, like, Techniques and stuff. I probably know. I know much, probably more than they do. It's awesome and nerve-wracking at the same time. Like it was one point that they all were just talking and laughing. And I was just like, "That's just amazing." And just to have them all in the same room. And then when we had a chance to talk to them about what we were thinking about doing, they gave us uh, their input, and that was amazing. But it's also nerve-wracking because they're like top chefs. Like these are chefs that have been all over the world, who have achi achieved a lot, accomplished a lot. So it's a little nervous and like happy at the same time. My family had me in the kitchen at a very, very young age cutting butter because I thought that I was the master chef just sitting there cutting butter with a spoon. <laughs> like I really love watching Food Network and I see them do it I'm like, oh, this is really awesome. Maybe one day work at uh, Walt Disney at a restaurant there. If like you take all of these things and put them in a bowl and mix them the right way, then you get this delicious thing that can, that people love and makes people happy. and. You know, I don't know, I just, it was just something that I enjoyed and then someone told me one day that I could have a career out of it and I was like, wow. I, had a, I was lucky I've had a lot of chef mentors in my life and I had one when I was really younger and he told me, he goes, the day you stop learning is the day you should retire. And you learn from every person you meet. You know, someone always has a better ability than you. Someone might fillet a fish better than you, so why wouldn't you learn from them? It's always a day of learning.